Chapter 9 Havan and Mandra looked around as they crossed a narrow bridge back over the river to the other side. They were coming up near the cemetery for the second time. Mandra had enlisted Havan's help in finding Precious and Jabir. I could have sworn I saw them go this way, Mandra muttered in frustration. I know it was them. We'll find them, Havan assured Mandra. Call to your symbiote again and see where they are. Mandra touched the gold band around his wrist. It didn't make sense. His symbiote was now showing Precious and Jabir on the steps. Maybe Precious is trying to get him back to our living quarters, Mandra replied in a heavy voice, as he turned back around to cross the bridge again. He is younger than the others and must be tired. Has he shifted yet? Havan asked as he turned as well. No, Mandra replied in a reluctant voice. I'm a little worried. The others had by this age. I'm sure, Havan was saying before his voice faded. You're sure of what? Mandra asked with a frown before he turned his gaze to where Havan was staring. Oh, goddess, he groaned as he stared in horror at the steps. Please tell me they don't come that big. Mandra swallowed as he stared at the biggest grombot he had ever seen in his life. He didn't think they could even grow that large. He tried to pull back on his dragon when it saw the creature. Eat, his dragon roared out in excitement. Eat, eat, eat. The fact that grombots were a rare delicacy was bad enough. The fact that they were all pets of his mate, who happened to also be something called a vegetarian, made it worse. He had discovered that grombots to him were like chocolate to his mate when she was pregnant and going through a major craving. He wasn't ashamed to admit he had begged Kara into replicating the damn stuff for Ariel. Now, now he had the biggest chocolate bar his dragon could have ever dreamed about crawling around with his son. Oh, dragons, balls, Mandra groaned, as his dragon swept past his defenses as he was lost in thought. The huge sapphire and silver dragon came forward in slow, steady steps. He paused when the huge rodent lowered its head and rubbed against Jabir. His son's laughter echoed as he wound his arms around the creature's head. We can't eat it, Mandra ordered his dragon. Ariel will kill us. This has to be one of her pets. Only she could find something so incredible. Eat! his dragon insisted. She not miss one. Mandra groaned as he tried to pull in his dragon. Look at it. Of course she'll miss that one. Mine, his dragon insisted as he came within pouncing distance. Mandra groaned even louder when the dam overgrown rodent turned its back to them and stuck its tail up in the air. It wiggled it, making Jabir roll with laughter. What was worse was it was like waving a succulent meal under his dragon's nose. I'm blaming you, Mandra warned, as he felt his dragon tense before it jumped and latched onto the waving tail. Mine, his dragon replied with delight. Both he and his dragon knew something was wrong the moment it bit down. Instead of moist, tender meat, they tasted coarse cloth, metal, and spongy filling. They both winced when they heard Ariel's outraged shriek of surprise. What surprised them both was when they were suddenly attacked by a tiny sapphire and silver replica of them. Mandra, Ariel choked out as she hung upside down by her ass from his dragon's mouth. What are you doing? Mandra stood frozen in confusion as he tried to process two things. Ariel had turned into a grombot, and second, his son was chewing on his ear. The first sent waves of horror through him, while the second made him so damn proud he dropped his mate when his dragon grinned. He watched in a daze as the huge grombot rolled over. For a moment, he closed his eyes and just thought of the pain radiating from his ear where Jabir continued to chew. He slowly opened them again, hoping that it had all been a figment of his imagination. Panic swept through him when he saw his maid's beautiful face with the body of a grombot. Ariel, 
he choked out after he shifted to his two-legged form. You are a... What happened? Who did this to you? He asked, blindly reaching up to pull Jabir into his arms when his son tried to land on his shoulder to grab his ear again. Ariel stared up into Mandra's deathly pale face. Her eyes shone with amusement as she watched him gently cradle their son in his arms. Jabir had finally shifted. He's as handsome as his father, she whispered, with love shining brightly in her eyes. Ariel watched as Mandra's head turned to look at the small dragonling in his arms. Jabir snapped at him and whimpered as he looked back and forth between his father and her. Her heart melted when Mandra's eyes softened and he pulled Jabir against his chest as he whispered reassuringly to him. I won't hurt her, he promised. I love your mother, no matter what she is. Mandra, Ariel whispered as she clumsily rose to her feet. She shook her head and smiled at him as she carefully pulled the head of the costume off and let it fall to the ground. His eyes widened as he got his first good look at what she was wearing. It's not real, he asked in a hopeful voice. I mean, I'd love you if somehow you had, he waved his hand awkwardly at her while maintaining his hold on Jabir. Emma did a wonderful job making it look real, Ariel admitted, as she took a step closer so she could tenderly caress Jabir, who had quietened down and was now yawning. He looks just like you. A firm hand wound in her hair and pulled her forward so that his forehead could rest against hers. Ariel glanced up at her mate. A small smile tugged at her lips when he pulled back and pressed a heated kiss to it. Let's go, he ordered in a gruff voice. I want to peel this thing off you and see what is underneath. Ariel's lips quirked again. Not much, she admitted. That's why I haven't taken it off. Emma forgot to leave my clothes on underneath when she created the costume. Mandra's low groan echoed in her ear as he brushed a kiss just below it. That makes me extremely horny, you know. Ariel turned back toward the stairs and started to climb them. She grinned up at where Emma was standing on the upper stairs to the control room, watching them with a shy smile as Alice played on the stairs at her feet. She mouthed a, thank you, before she felt Mandra's strong arm wrap around her foam-filled waist. I can't wait to eat you up, he whispered in her ear, as they swept through the upper level door. Haven, who had been watching the whole scene with Mandra and Ariel in amusement, decided he'd had enough for the night. As far as he was concerned, the others were on their own. Striding back across the bridge, he took the lower steps two at a time up to the entrance to the cavern. He stumbled to a startled stop when a loud cry from his left caught his attention. Turning, he saw Emma standing on a set of steps leading up to another level. Alice sat playing on the step below her. Emma, Haven whispered in surprise. Da, da, Alice cried out again, stretching her arms out to him and opening and closing her fingers. Da! She missed you, Emma grinned. A chuckle escaped him when he opened his arms, and within the blink of an eye, Alice was in them. He hugged her tiny body against his chest in a fierce but gentle hold. Their little girl was getting stronger. Yes, she is, Emma quietly whispered back to him. How did you know I had left, he murmured as she came to stand next to him. I always know where you are. Emma replied in a quiet voice. I have to know. Haven shifted Alice so he could pull Emma closer when he heard the slight tremor in her voice. Even after almost two years, the fear of losing each other still struck at unexpected times. I'm sorry, he whispered, holding her against his warm body. I should have told you. Emma relaxed against him. You did, she reminded him as she remembered his soft, whispered words of love and reassurance that he would return soon as she slept. You just forgot to tell me where you were going. Da, sleepy, Alice murmured with a yawn. Haven grinned as Alice rubbed her eyes. She's learning more words. Emma brushed a kiss to Alice's cheek as she pulled out of Haven's arms. Focusing, 
She held her hands out for her and Alice's brooms. She grinned up at Haven when they appeared in her palms. I'm getting better, she said in triumph. Haven's eyes ran down over her slender form dressed in the witch's costume. His eyes lingered on the slight swell of her breasts showing in the low cut top. Hunger gripped him. So am I, he muttered, sweeping his arm back around her and focusing on their living quarters. Emma's muffled laughter was cut short as Haven teleported them to their living quarters. For once, he didn't give a damn who knew what he could do. He just wanted to be alone with his little family.